this little stove, the Folding Firebox Nano. Steve here. Hey, I'm gonna try something really different today. I'm gonna try to cook eggs using only the firebox and it's some of its accessories. Um, but I'm gonna try to fry the eggs on the ash pan. I'm gonna do it with a different fuel as well. I'm actually gonna use coconuts. Uh, my friend from Hawaii has sent me a bunch of coconut shells and husks. And I'm going to try to use these to build up a bed of hot coals and fry an egg on the ash pan. So this should be really interesting. I'll get this all set up. I'm going to break these coconuts up and I'll be right, right back with you. Okay, I've got my coconut shells all broken up. I'll go ahead and, and uh, set up the firebox here. Now I do have a little bit of a breeze coming from this direction. I'm going to rotate the firebox to this position so the wind will have to go around uh, the side windshields here. And I'm not going to put in the ash pan because I'm going to need it to cook on. But what I am going to do is do a little bit of an experiment with the carbon fiber, or excuse me, the carbon felt and see how well it works as to block the heat um, as a alternative to an ash pan. So I'm going to rip off a piece of this paper towel and I'm going to put it underneath the firebox but I'm going to put a piece of carbon felt on top of it and then put the firebox on top of that. Put the fire grate down, and that should be good right there. I am there. going to keep my fire sticks quite a ways out, because I don't want them to get terribly hot, just in case I need to touch them to change the adjustment. So I'll drop that fire grate down there, and then I'm going to start lighting some of these husks, and just see how well this stuff works for getting a fire started. Now I want a fairly low temperature because I'm just going to be cooking on that thin stainless steel and the heat's just going to go right through that and I just don't want it to just instantly burn my eggs. So let's get some of this husk going. Looks like it's going to want to burn pretty good. It almost burns too good because there's so much fuel that it kind of puts itself out, runs out of oxygen. Yeah, that husk is actually a little bit hard to get started. It wants to smolder really well, but it doesn't actually want to hold a flame. This is a little bit looser here. It definitely wants to smolder like crazy. It would be a great way to, to carry a hot coal. I'm sure that would uh, smolder forever. But I can't get it to hold a flame at all. Yeah, it just really flares up and then goes out. But you can see it does not 
go out all the way. It's, it holds a it holds the hot coal and it wants to smolder really really well. Okay, well I might need to use a little bit of my standard fuel to get this going which is a little bit of sagebrush. We all know how well that burns. So I'm just gonna grab a couple of sticks of sagebrush. And then once I have a little fire going, then I'll add the coconut shell into this. We should be, we should be good to go then. And I know coconut shell will make really good hot coals. Maybe I can use these smoldering husks to get my sticks going. Man, I'll tell you what, that is smoky. There we go. Okay, we have flames. So now I'm going to go ahead and start adding in some of these shells. And we'll see how they burn. Now the coconut shell is really dense. So I think it's going to be kind of like hardwood. Wow, you can really hear something going on in there. Maybe that's some of that coconut or something. But yeah, I think there's a lot of fuel in a coconut shell. This will be interesting. It looks like it's burning really, really hot. If you're ever stranded on a uh, desert island, you will be able to use coconut in your firebox to cook. I can see some hot coals dropping down into that carbon felt and uh, I can't really tell you know how good that's working I, I won't be able to really evaluate that until it's finished but I'm just gonna go ahead and let that burn down and I'll come back to you when that's hot coals and we'll try to get our uh, we'll try to get the ash pan set up on top and see if we can't uh, cook ourselves some eggs on there so there is a tremendous amount of fuel in these coconut shells. I just cannot believe how much fire it is producing. And every once in a while, it'll just you'll just hear this sound. It sounds like a torch running, um, where it's kind of maybe pushing some kind of uh, gas out, but it really just accelerates the fire. And it looks like it's starting to turn to hot coals there a little bit uh, on the one side. Uh, so hopefully the flame will settle down and I'll be able to maybe push those hot coals down and, uh, and we'll start trying to fry my egg. Okay, the flames have gone out, so I'm going to go ahead and try to set this up with the ash pan. It's going to be quite hot and setting this up with the ash pan is a little more tricky um, than just setting up a boil plate or a grill plate. Um, because you don't have the slots accessible to hold it. So with everything hot, I think it's going to be a little bit tricky, but uh, let's just see what I can do here, and I'll just try to figure this out as I go. I'm going to hold the whole setup like this, put the one side in, and then try to use both of the fire sticks together to try to pry this side in. It's not, I don't have that half moon shape available to help me do it, but it looks like I'm able, I was able to get it in there without too much trouble. So I think that's going to get actually probably too hot. I have this little silicone ring that Barry from Hawaii sent me. As I put that butter on, I want to get the butter on the silicone as well because I don't want it to stick to that either. Looks like it might be a pretty good temperature actually. Let me go ahead and put one egg. I think I'm going to go ahead and do two eggs. Yeah, it actually isn't overheating like I thought it might. 
Let's go ahead and put another egg on. We'll just cook these together, and I think the slower it cooks, probably the better. Let's see how that goes. I'm going to close my wind damper. Keep that heat under there. But I did remember my salt and pepper this time, and I do have one of these GSI salt and pepper shakers. Over the years, I've used quite a few different uh, backpacking salt and pepper shakers. And uh, the GSI one is by far my favorite, mostly because it's just nice and sturdy. Um, you know, a lot of the others are kind of made out of that really brittle, hard plastic that seems to, seems to break real easy and just be a little bit harder to work with. And this GS, the GSI's, I've, I've, since I've gotten this GSI salt and pepper shaker, you know, I think it'll be the last salt and pepper shaker I ever have to buy because it's just really nice and sturdy, good quality. I think I'm actually going to throw a few more shells in there and just increase my heat just a little bit. Or I guess what I could do is use my fire sticks and raise up the level of my fire here a little bit. Let's try to do that. See, I am able to touch those. They're pretty hot, so I'm going to have to work fast. So that raised it up a little bit. Yeah, those fire sticks are pretty hot. That's bubbling there a little bit. I don't know if I want to go a whole lot higher than that. I do have a little shell in here I want to get out. Well, with as thick as this egg is, I think I want it to cook pretty slowly. Well, maybe we're good at that height here for a second. As the fire is cooling off, slowly, I'll slowly raise it up. can't really turn my egg until it cooks. Maybe I should have only done one egg because now I've made it quite thick. So it's really going to need to cook for quite a while on that one side. trying to think here if it might be possible to turn it with this little egg ring intact. But I don't think so. I think I'm going to go ahead and try turning it now and see what happens. Voila! Hey, this is working out great. Thanks, Barry. Thanks for the toys.
little more pepper. Just a little bit more salt. And my egg might be getting pretty close here. Maybe I'll lean my plate here up against my firebox and get it warmed up. Oh yeah, this is looking really nice. Okay, I think this egg is done. That was very successful. That's a beautiful egg. No, we didn't even need a pan. How cool is that? Now well, let's see if I can possibly get this out here. I'm going to try prying against this edge. There we go. I'm going to take that off. And I'm going to raise my hot coals up a little more. If it's not too hot to work with. And I'm going to put my fire sticks across the top. And I'm going to make my traditional toast. Because I like an egg sandwich on toast. And that bread is wanting to stick to that hot fire stick. But I think as soon as it gets a little cooked that it'll stop sticking. It's making toast really fast. My eggs staying nice and warm, keep it, keeping it nice, nice and close to the firebox. Oh yeah, hey, that's almost done already. Oof. A little bit of butter here on my toast, just because that will make it better. And I'm going to go ahead and put my egg on my toast. And there's my egg sandwich. Compliments of Barry Markowitz from Hawaii. Thank you, Barry, so much for the toys and for my breakfast. Well, there we have it. Egg on toast, made with the firebox, uh, with a egg ring, and no pots or pans or cooking ware at all. Mmm. And it's delicious. Wow. That is nice and moist and tender. That is a great egg. And I'll be right back with you after I finish My egg and my egg on toast breakfast. Okay, so the whole idea here was to experiment with cooking without a pan with the with the uh, ash pan, but also to see how well this carbon felt would work as a ground protector in the place of an ash pan. So let's go ahead and move the firebox out of the way and uh, we can see we've got some hot coals and ash just here on the top, but it didn't seem to degrade the surface of the carbon felt at all. And there's some fat that got on here and dripped through, so it's a little oil soaked there, but, it, but the paper towel is completely white. It's not browned at all. Anyway, that's our experiment for the day, and I uh, thank you all for watching. 
It was fun stuff and a good breakfast. Thank you, Barry. Bye-bye.